This is Steve Wright for the Foundry to talk to you about Nuke's amazing color management system. In this first section, let's take a quick overview of the color management features. And there are three main features. One, Nuke works in 32-bit float. Two, Nuke works with high dynamic range images. And three, everything is done in linear light space. All of the pictures that you see in these videos are included in the project media folder that you can download so you can play along too. Let's take a look at the 32-bit float. I have this 8-bit TIFF image here in the viewer. As I rub the cursor over the viewer, you can see the floating point precision RGB values down here in the bottom, and you can see the amazing precision of the viewers. But I want to demonstrate how the 32-bit floating point protects all of the images from any damage in image processing in order to maintain the highest possible quality feature film effects. I'm going to select the Marcy input node, come up to the color tab, and add a multiply node. I'm going to scale the Marcy RGB values down by 1 1,000th, 0 .001, and of course the viewer goes nearly black. I still got some pixels in there, you can see down here at the bottom of the viewer, that I still got some code values, but they're mighty tiny. I'm even going to add a blur node in order to break up any possible concatenation of operations. Selecting the blur node, I'll add another multiply node, and this time I'm going to scale Marcy up by 1000. And she's back. In fact, I can connect the original Marcy here to the second input of the viewer, and as I bounce between the two inputs, you can see there's absolutely no degradation to the picture, even though it was scaled down by a factor of 1000 and then scaled back up. Next we'll take a look at high dynamic range images. Here's an EXR file. As many of you know, these are very high dynamic range images. In fact, you can see there are code values in here that are over 100. Now they look clipped in the viewer, but that's because the viewer can only display code values between 0 and 1.0. Nuke goes far beyond 1.0. I'm going to scale down the viewer gain. In fact, I'm going to take it down even smaller. I'm going to inch it way, way, way down like that. And you can see there's still color information in that picture. Look at those code values, 50, 126, and 100. I'll put the viewer back and rehome it so we can take a look at this 10-bit log Cineon image. Cineon images are also high dynamic range images. Instead of being floating point, they're 10-bit integer log images. But when they come into Nuke and are converted to linear light space, they expand up to their full dynamic range with no loss of quality. Now, again, the fire looks clipped in the viewer, but you can see in here there are code values way over 1. In fact, we can zoom in here. And again, I'm going to turn the viewer gain down. And now we can see the very high code values in the 10-bit Cineon log image. I'll rehome the viewer and reset the viewer gain back to normal. So what is this linear light space? Linear light space means that the code values of the pixels represent actual scene illumination, not brightness relative to the eye. Nuke uses linear light space for three very important reasons. One, proper image processing math. When you are scaling or multiplying RGB values or multiplying two images together, if they're not in linear light space, the math comes out wrong. Two, compatibility with CGI. CGI is rendered in linear light space, but when it's written to disk, it gets converted to other color spaces. Since Nuke has 3D rendering capabilities, it must be able to render CGI the same way that RenderMan or Maya does, and that's in linear light space. The third reason is for mixing image types. You'll notice that I had an 8-bit linear TIFF, an EXR high dynamic range image, and a 10-bit log Cineon file. These three images are in completely different color spaces, but when they're brought into Nuke, they're all converted to linear light space, so they're all totally compatible with each other and can be mixed perfectly. Earlier we heard that images need to be in linear light space for the mathematics to come out right of the image processing. So why do we have to convert all the images that we load into Nuke into linear light space? Aren't they already linear? Well, the answer is no. Most images are not truly linear. Most of them have a baked-in gamma correction, and they're really a gamma-corrected linear image. 
This illustration will show you what's going on. Let's start here with picture number one. And let's say that this is the display intent here. This is what the picture should look like on your monitor. If you were to put that image data on a CRT, the gamma of the CRT shown here by this curve, the gamma is a darkening effect that the CRT has because it's not a linear display device. And it will darken the image down like you see here in image two. So what's done universally is a gamma correction is applied to the image like this, which compensates for the monitor, making the image brighter like this. So the image is pre-brightened by a gamma correction to exactly offset the darkening that the monitor is going to do. The result is over here, image 4, the monitor display, and we wind up with a reasonably linear looking image. So as you can see, so-called linear images are really gamma corrected linear images and have the gamma correction baked into the pixel data. So Nuke has to back that out to convert them into a true linear light space. Now you might be thinking, well I work with a flat panel display so I don't have CRT gamma. Well, the problem is that industry standards are all flat panel displays, even though they don't really have a gamma problem like a CRT does, this gamma is built into the display so that it will replicate the behavior of a CRT. This is done so the images will look the same whether they're on a CRT or a flat panel display. So even though you're using a flat panel display, your pictures are still being darkened by this gamma curve. We can get an overview of the entire Nuke color management workflow with this flow graph. Starting here on the left, the read node linearizes the images, converting them all to linear light space by applying a gamma correction LUT to it here. Then, all of the images being in linear light space, they are correctly composited, the math is done right, and everything is mathematically correct. When the linear image is set up to the viewer, there's a LUT applied at the viewer in order to make it look right on your monitor. When you're done with the composite, the linear image is sent to the write node, and the write node applies a gamma correction to it just as it's written out to disk. This is done so that the gamma corrected image will look right on the next monitor or workstation. Now let's go back and take a close-up look at this read node action right here. Here are three read nodes. If I open up the marcy.tiff file, this is an 8-bit TIFF image. Notice that Nuke has detected the color space as an 8-bit TIFF and has applied an sRGB gamma correction to it to linearize it. If I select this EXR image, Nuke has detected that and has applied a linear color space correction to it. In other words, there's been no change to that image. And if I select the Cineon image, Nuke has detected that and applies the Cineon LUT in order to linearize that image. So the read node detects what type of image it is and converts everything to linear light space. Of course, you don't have to accept the default LUT that Nuke assigns. You can use this pop-up and select any other LUT you want. And we'll see shortly where LUTs are defined in Nuke.